Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Friday, March the 27th, 2015. The Jerusalem Post reports that Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's office announced today that Israel would resume the transfer of revenue to the Palestinian Authority. The funds had been frozen by Israel after the PA's application to the International Criminal Court in The Hague in order to bring charges against Israel. The announcement to unfreeze the funds to the interim government in Ramallah came just before sundown at the start of Shabbat in Israel this evening. Several residents of the Druze village of Majd al-Shams in Israel's Golan Heights were arrested for allegedly spying on the IDF in the Golan and passing that information along to Syria. Those detained included 48-year-old Sidki al makit who previously served a 27-year sentence in Israeli prison on terrorism charges. He was caught spying on IDF activity in the Golan Heights and transferring it over the internet to Syrian intelligence. The other men detained are suspected of being accomplices of Makat. They were released to house arrest. Makat was arraigned in the Nazareth District Courthouse on counts of espionage, aiding the enemy during wartime, supporting a terrorist organization, and contact with a foreign agent. Israel's President Reuven Rivlin flew to Singapore yesterday to pay his respects today to its late Prime Minister Lee Kuan Yew, who died Monday at the age of 91. Rivlin's visit to Singapore was the first by an Israeli president since Chaim Herzog's visit to the Southeast Asian state in 1987. Rivlin called Lee a dear friend of Israel and the Jewish people. He will remain in Singapore over the weekend to attend the state funeral for Lee on Sunday. In an op-ed this week published in the Times of Israel, National Director of the Anti-Defamation League, Abe Foxman, expressed his concern at calls coming out of the White House for a reassessment of policy towards Israel, following pre-election remarks and actions made by Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, including his seeming rejection of a two-state solution, which he later clarified. Foxman writes that while he himself was critical of several steps taken by Netanyahu during his re-election campaign, none of those steps justifies the response of the Obama administration of seemingly distancing itself from Israel, something Foxman says will encourage Palestinians to think they can achieve a state without recognizing Israel as a Jewish state. He said the Obama administration could pressure the Palestinians to accept Israel's legitimacy. That, Foxman said, would generate the greatest impact for change on the Israeli side. He writes, a diminution of fears about Palestinian intentions is the best formula for a more moderate Israeli electorate and Israeli policies. Two Republican congressmen introduced legislation this week to prevent boycotts of Israel. Colorado Congressman Doug Lamborn and Florida Congressman Ron DeSantis presented the Boycott Our Enemies, Not Israel Act on Wednesday to, as they write, thwart efforts by Palestinian organizations to pressure companies to boycott, divest, and sanction Israel. They wrote, these attacks and the falsehoods being spread about Israel are harmful to any honest effort to bring peace to the region. The bill would require prospective contractors with the U.S. government to certify that they are not participating in any boycotts against Israel. Lamborn and DeSantis noted that Israel was the only true democracy in the Middle East and said the BDS movement represents a disgraceful attempt to single out Israel for punitive treatment. The Texas House of Representatives yesterday passed a resolution condemning anti-Semitism. The resolution condemns both official and unofficial government sanctioning of anti-Semitism and expresses, quote, continued commitment to combating anti-Semitism. It urges governments to take all steps necessary to eradicate anti-Semitism and calls for more Holocaust education programs. The American Jewish Committee lauded the passage of the bill, which it has long advocated for. Similar legislation was passed earlier this month in Massachusetts and New Jersey. The Associated Press reports that a typewritten list bearing the names of 15 prisoners at Auschwitz was found between the pages of a high school library book about the history of warfare 
in a library in Poland. It was found during a stock taking at the library of the Second Lyceum in Lodz, which is about 120 miles from the former death camp. Historians and school officials are trying to figure out how it got there. Auschwitz Museum spokesman Pavel Sawicki told the AP that historians believe the document is authentic but was still going to test it to confirm. He noted the burnt edges of the paper and said the Nazis burned most of the Auschwitz archives when they were getting ready to evacuate the camp in January of 1945, something which makes the list even more precious. The list is dated May the 21st of 1941 and bears the names of inmates brought to Auschwitz that day from Lotz and two other Polish towns. Eight of them were determined to have died at the death camp. Two survived, but have since died. The fate of another five remains unknown. And that's the JBS News Update for Friday, March the 27th, 2015. I'm Tisha Bader. Remember, live Shabbat services are coming up at 6 tonight from New York City's Central Synagogue. Shabbat Shalom.